In this video, we're going to be discussing when should you install new crankshaft bearings in your diesel engine. Hey guys, this is Joshua with Depth Tape Channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing bearing replacement on your diesel engines, or really when you should be replacing your main and connecting rod bearings. And the reason I get this question through email or in the comments section a lot is because it used to be quite a common practice to do what they'd call a bearing roll, which basically meant take your oil pan off and roll new connecting rod, thrust bearings, and main bearings into the bottom end of your engine. Now this is a, this was, I should say, a common practice back in the olden days when diesel was 10 cents a bushel. But anymore, it's not really a practice that's done very often, so guys that have been around a little bit longer seem to ask this question. Now another issue we've had, at least a comment that I get a lot of, is my hat. And why is the bill flat? Why don't you roll that bill? So we're going to fix that right now. All right, you happy? It's not really rolled appropriately. But anyway, so let's get into the topic. So to answer the question first, no. Caterpillar does not recommend or have any scheduled maintenance plan for removing your crankshaft bearings, inspecting and replacing them basically in the last 25 years on their on highway trucks. When they went to the 3406Es, the 3126s, they basically dropped the bearing replacement and inspection interval. Now, if you go into the CAT information system and you still look into your B models or in your older engines, there's still gonna be the periodic inspection at about half the engine life. The engine life on a 3406B, according to CAT, is about 500,000 miles, although it can go farther than that. And about 250,000 miles, which would be half of that, is when they tell you to inspect the crankshaft bearing or connecting rod bear bearings in particular. Now, that answers the question, but let's get a little deeper into the subject to understand why you would want to possibly or not do a bearing roll in your engine. And one thing to remember here is I'm talking about diesel engines and I'm talking about CATs in particular. This does not apply to every diesel engine ever made. It doesn't even apply to all CAT engines ever made. Please check your own specific manufacturer or engine information. This may not apply to a Cummins or it may not apply to International. Please see what their recommendations are for bearing replacement and inspection, okay? Don't always take my word for it. I'm just discussing the topic. So first, let's talk about really what is a bearing. Well, bearings basically hold your crankshaft and the connecting rods to the crankshaft in your engine. Your main bearings, this would be a main bearing upper, and there's a lower section obviously as well, holds the crankshaft with the main caps into the engine block. And your connecting rod bearings, this would be a connecting rod bearing, holds the connecting rods with the rod cap to the crankshaft. And the bearings are a soft faced alloy material with typically a steel backing that enable an oil film to form between the bearing face and the crankshaft journal. This bait, this very thin oil film, which is a couple thousandths of an inch thick, enables an oil cushion to form and hopefully prevent any metal to metal contact. It's basically forming a frictionless environment or extremely low friction environment for the crankshaft to rotate and last a long time in your engine. Now, over time, bearings can show signs of wear. Now, bearings generally don't they don't rotate, they don't really move, so they're not really wearing out. They're not coming into contact with anything outside of oil. Where they start to really wear is when you start to get items in between them and the crankshaft journal. This could be dirt, it could be pieces of metal from another failed component, it could be even electricity flowing through possibly an ungrounded engine or something that's making a lot of static electricity. So they, they can wear over time, but it's almost never the fault of the bearing that it's wearing. It's usually some other system is failing and damaging the bearings. Now, the reason you would be replacing the bearings before you're doing an engine overhaul is because you're trying to prevent them becoming very damaged. Now, this is a connecting rod bearing and it's kind of hard to see, but it's heavily damaged. This is called a spun bearing, meaning that the bearing, the friction 
got so bad that it stuck to the crankshaft journal instead of being stuck to the connecting rod or to the main journal and it actually spun with the crank and at that point you're basically destroying the crankshaft the engine and or the connecting rod so that's what you're trying to prevent but typically it's not the fault of the bearing as i already mentioned that would be causing a catastrophic failure like that usually when you see a catastrophic failure like that it's because something has failed in the oil system or perhaps you've had a cylinder failure like a drop valve which has basically forced the connecting rod into the crankshaft and at that point can't really blame the bearing for that generally light bearing wear is not going to cause a spun bearing so why would you have been doing bearing rolls well the theory was you want to inspect the bearings to make sure they're not getting to the point that perhaps they're going to start contacting the journal of the crankshaft so if the theory is you want to inspect them before that why would you not want to do that the reason you may not want to do that is because generally, at least in my experience, and probably the CAT engineers is why they dropped the bearing roll idea, was because during a lot of rebuilds, you'll get engines with hundreds of thousands, maybe a million miles on them, and you pull the bearings out, and they look pretty good. They look, I've pulled them out, and they look pretty much identical to the ones I'm installing. Maybe there's some really light smearing or very small amounts of debris embedded in the bearing but in general they're in great shape they don't they should not have been replaced or didn't need to be replaced but during a rebuild you're always going to replace your main and your rod bearings at least on a cat engine so why not inspect them before it's time for an overhaul well when you start when you pull an oil pan when you pull the connecting rods you're doing a couple things you are exposing that engine to the outside air which is unfiltered you're also going to be even if you try to be clean you're going to be installing or at least putting a lot more dirt into that engine than generally it has you have to remember engines are sealed environments there's no just ambient air just rolling into the engine the air that's getting ingested during the combustion process is or should be getting filtered by the air filter so there should not be dirt entering the engine that way the exhaust system also although it goes through a muffler, is not allowing large amounts of air to just go in to the crankcase and roll around. It can have air backfeed into the cylinders, but generally it's a sealed environment. There's not much dirt getting in and out of the engine unless you start introducing it yourself. So if you decide to do a bearing roll, you are installing new bearings. However, you are potentially installing debris into the engine you are potentially misinstalling a bearing or not installing it correctly and you also have the potential of installing a faulty part there are faulty bearings even from the factory i've gotten bearing sets and i won't install some of the bearings i make parts return them because they already have embedded material or just casting issues if you aren't very particular and you miss these things you could end up with a spun new bearing which damages your entire engine. So the question is, is if you are not gonna be just rolling new bearings in, when should you install new crankshaft bearings? Well, at any time of rebuild, I would recommend installing new rod bearings, main bearings, and thrust bearings. Also, if you're having any sort of weird low end knocking or noise, or if you get a bad oil sample back that could indicate bearing material is in elevated levels, those are good reasons to check your bearings. What if your oil pressure is lower than it used to be, slightly or maybe not so slightly? So can bearings cause low oil pressure? Yes, they can if they're heavily worn. But generally, I don't recommend just checking your bearings the first thing if, let's say, your oil pressure has dropped by 4 PSI from what it was six months ago. Generally, if you're getting lower oil pressure but it's still within specs, I recommend doing less than pulling your oil pan and pulling all your bearings out. I would say let's start checking some other things. Does changing your oil filter increase your oil pressure back to where it was? Has the oil not been changed recently? Is there potentially fuel in the oil caused by a leaking injector solenoid or a leaking injector body or some other cause of fuel in the oil? I would recommend getting an oil sample done. They're fairly inexpensive, generally between $15 and $20, and they can tell you a lot about the quality and the condition of the oil before you start going after the bearings. If the first thing you do is check your bearings when you have slightly lower oil pressure you're probably going to find that they probably look okay and lightly worn bearings are not going to drop your oil pressure hardly at all if at all 
So low oil pressure. Now, if it's getting really low, then you might want to start looking at potential causes. Still do the basic things, oil samples and checking your oil filter, replacing the oil and the oil filter. But remember, there are other things that can affect your oil pressure outside of the bearing, such as the oil pump, the bypass valves, restrictions in the oil galleries or the oil cooler. There's a lot involved in the crankcase oil system, okay? So that's a fairly in-depth, if not short, discussion of when or if you should do bearing rolls on your engine. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.